Hey guys, I'm Jordan Needham, this is JHAM3D, and today I'm going to be showing you how to make geometry node orb curves, I guess is the best way to put it. I know it's pretty specific, but uh, that's, that's because I actually made this in a project, which I posted a time lapse for on my channel earlier, and one of my viewers was asking how I made these curves, which you can see um, on my screen right now, and I will go to another frame. And yeah, so there's like a bunch of these little dots and these curves, which are supposed to be like energy waves or energy, um, it's not, I, electricity. Yeah, I guess it's like electricity. <laughs> so um, it, it's a really specific thing, like I said, but it's really simple to make using geometry nodes in Blender. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. Um, first of all, I just want to show you kind of what's going on in the scene that I created and I'll go ahead and hide everything that we don't need. So, um, yeah, I use, you, you can see it's just, it's really just a bunch of curves rotated and then with Icosphere's instance on the points. And, uh, you might already understand this by now, but if you don't stick around, I'm going to show you how to make this in a couple of seconds here. So let's get this, let's get this ready. Okay, so now I'm on my fresh blender scene and uh, I do always have some like, um, some uh, startup settings that are custom to me. So your blender won't look exactly like mine, but uh, similar enough to where it shouldn't be an issue. Okay, let's get into this. So make sure you go over to your geometry nodes tab. You don't have to, you could just open a tab but um, just to make it easy blender already set it up for you so once you select that tab just go ahead and shift a and add in a uh, bezier curve okay so now we have this curve and we're gonna add a geometry node modifier to it and now we um, we have to add one more thing of geometry which is a shift a icosphere and then control two to add a subsurface modifier on that with a uh, level of two and uh, right click shade smooth. Okay, so now we have this icosphere which kind of looks like a sphere because of the, all the um, edits that we made on it. And we're gonna want to add a material to this. So come down here, click new material and just name this emission. change this to an emission shader and make it something like 12. Strength of 12 should be good and I'm just gonna give it a little bit of a blue tint. Okay, and now if we go to our shaders um, window, viewport shader, we got a new material on this and if we go into our rendered preview, you can see we have this kind of emission shader going on here. So that's good. Okay, now we need to somehow combine these together, right? We need these to be on the curve, which is super simple to do actually. So I'm just gonna go ahead and hide that icosphere because it's in the way. And um, I'm gonna click back on my Bezier curve and I'm going to drag click and drag on this icosphere and use the object data so we have it right here an object info node and then shift a add in an instance on points node okay and now oh no it got rid of our bezier curve what the hell no it's it's fine don't freak out plug this geometry slot right here into the instance on your instance on points node and now we have two uh, icospheres on this curve, which means it is instancing this uh, this icosphere. So we're gonna scale that down because it's way too big, obviously. So we'll just go to something like 0 0.05. Okay, that's more like it. Uh, but now you see we only have two, which means if you take a look at this, it's only instancing at the ends of the curve, which could be fine for some scenarios, but we want to get it to like it is here where it's just a ton of them and um, all over the curve. So super easy to do that actually. All you have to do is shift A and subdivide your curve. And now you can see we have an extra point on that curve. And if we keep doing that, 
you can just add extra points. So that's super cool. Um, now you can see we're getting very close to finishing this. So uh, another thing that you can see on these curves is a variation in the scales of those icospheres. Super easy to do. Just uh, come back down here, shift A, add in a random value node, plug the value of this into the scale. And oh my gosh, it's way too big again. Uh, let's make the max value 0 0.05 because I think that's what we had. And the minimum 0 0.01 just because if you have it go down to zero, sometimes it can result in like, obviously there's nothing. If you scale something to zero, it's not there. Doesn't exist, right? So sometimes too, if, like if you put it in a negative, then you'll have it scaling up again and you'll have some that are zero so not there but also some that are just like way too big so just anyways <laughs> just keep it um kind of like i showed you now if your values don't look exactly like this that's absolutely fine that just means that your icosphere that you're instancing is probably just a different size and so if you're having a problem with that that's super easy to fix so I'll show you something right here, actually. I'm just gonna scale down. I'm gonna click S and I'm gonna scale down this icosphere. And uh, let's move it out of the way here. And then you can see that did nothing to the instanced icospheres here. But if I do Control A and apply that scale, you can see it definitely has an effect on our um, geometry node modifier. So now we have to change these values. And so I'll go up again to something like this just so we have some variation but you can see how that works now so another step is in the books okay so we basically already have the curve and that's super cool but now we need to know how to rotate it and then we're gonna have to know how to add more curves and there's a really really cool way to do that there's actually a couple different ways to do that but I'm gonna show you the most intuitive way I think to do it so if we want to like move this node around we have a couple different ways we can do that we can actually just use the viewport and click G and use our normal functions of R and S to scale R to rotate G to move or we can come into our geometry node tab shift a add in a transform node and now we can move it in the same ways, but it won't affect the actual location of our base geometry. So that's cool. And that's something that can come in handy when you do this, which is we're going to add another curve. Um, this is not the most intuitive way to do this, but I'm gonna show you the least intuitive way. And then I'm gonna show you what I think is the best way to do it. So first, Here's how we can add another curve. So we can um, shift A, add in a join geometry node and add that over here and then duplicate this transform node and plug in this instance on points to that transform node, our second one, and then plug that into the join geometry. And now we have two separate curves which we can control individually. So that's super cool, right? Uh, but like I said, it's not that intuitive because if you want to add another one, you can kind of end up with this super long chain of geometry nodes, which you can kind of see starting to form in the, the original scene that I made. And uh, it worked, but I also know of another way to do this, which is way better in my opinion. So I'm just gonna delete that and yeah i'm just gonna delete all of that and so now we're left with just these few nodes these four nodes right here um and the benefit of starting out with a bezier curve instead of using something like a plane mesh like a cube or a plane uh circle whatever is that we can actually tab in the edit mode with this bezier curve selected and if we go over here, I'm just, I maximized my window by hitting control space, sorry. Um, if we go over to our tools panel and we click on draw, I'm gonna hit seven so we can go into the top orthographic view. Now we can draw a curve and it will instance 
all of those icospheres onto all of the points on the curve that we just drew. So we can draw whatever we want, whatever shape we want, you can see, and it will just fill it in, which is super intuitive, right? I mean, it's super quick. That's the power of geometry nodes. And that's why I prefer that over um, the, the first way that I was showing you. So I really hope this tutorial helped you. And if you made something using this tutorial, or if you just want to share your work with me, I would really, really appreciate that. I know one of you guys reached out to me and shared your work with me on Instagram and it was super cool. I just love the community aspect of this. So definitely don't be shy to reach out to me on Instagram. Um, and uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. I'm Jordan Needham, this has been JHAM3D and I'll catch you guys next time. Peace.